With Jerry Gamawara, a good day. Good morning to everybody, customers and staff of the Amazon Web Services, and especially our close friends and neighbours from New Zealand across the Tasman Sea. I am Dr. Peter McKenzie, an elder and direct descendant of the Cudigal people who once inhabited the Sydney CBD area. And it gives me great pleasure to most warmly welcome you all here today. I'm especially pleased to welcome any Indigenous brothers and sisters with us today from interstate and international destinations. We wish them a very pleasant stay in our traditional country. As you may know, the welcome to country is our contemporary Aboriginal interpretation of receiving visitors and new friends who may wish to visit areas within our traditional lands or, as we call it, country. It is an Aboriginal ceremony which recognises many cultural and spiritual connections. And this ceremony also gives us the opportunity to pay respect and to especially acknowledge our elders, past and present, of all religions and all cultures and to reflect on our shared history and build a vision for a prosperous, reconciled and greater future. Our community, like many on the east coast of Australia, are known as salt water people, where our ancestors have always lived a sedentary lifestyle, unlike the Aboriginal people of the Australian interior, who had a more nomadic existence. The sea and its bounty has always provided both sustenance and cultural comfort, which we take with wonderful, take from with wonderful coastlines and beautiful beaches of our Sydney coast. Amazon friends, we wish you an enjoyable day and safe passage back to your homes, wherever that may be, and we hope that you felt very welcomed. I'm Dr. Peter McKenzie and I thank you. Please welcome Managing Director of Australia and New Zealand Amazon Web Services, Rianne van Veldwiesen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this year's AWS Summit. It's an honor to be here again with you this year. And um, it's great to see you all in the room, feel your energy. Are you a bit ready for Summit this year? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for joining us here in Sydney. But friends, we have a few uh, that are joining us via the live stream today. And a very, very warm welcome to you too. I love this time of year. Because yes, it's Summit time. And we're kicking it off right here in Australia. And today, you, we, are here together with our customers and AWS partners to learn, innovate, and unlock the potential of cloud for 2023 and beyond. And I want to begin today by thanking this community, starting with our sponsors and AWS partners. 
We're so proud to work together with all of you. And thank you for what you deliver to our customers day in and day out. And then last night, we had quite an incredible evening because we celebrated the success of our partner network and the innovation and outcomes that you've delivered. You want to know who the winners were? Because we awarded that and recognized it with the Cloud Innovation Awards. And I thought, let's from the summit stage congratulate the winners again. Because here they are, the AWS Cloud Innovation Award winners. Congratulations to all of you. Very keen to see what you're going to deliver this year. So yeah, keep an eye out for these. Then I also want to acknowledge our global developers, our AWS heroes, our AWS community builders, and user groups who share their learnings to support others across Australia and New Zealand. There are five themes that I'd like to talk to you about today to get us all energized about what's possible together. Today, we're going to talk about our long-term commitment and investment into the region, how AWS is going to support you to do more with less, how we help you to reduce your impact on the environment, and how AWS helps our customers with keeping their data safe and secure in the cloud. And yes, I'll announce a few things along the way. So, over the past decade, AWS has invested billions of dollars in jobs and infrastructure into the Australian and New Zealand economies. In January this year, we launched AWS's first local zone here in Australia in Perth. And then later, we also launched the nation's second AWS region in Melbourne. And then if we move to beautiful New Zealand next year, we plan to invest 7.5 billion New Zealand dollars to open the AWS Auckland region. Yeah, New Zealand friends. <laughs> we have a few fans in the room. So why do we invest so much infrastructure into the region? Simply because it brings the world closer. We bring the world closer to our customers and our partners so you can deploy workloads globally with just a few clicks. And having two AWS regions here in Australia gives you the option to run workloads in country with greater resilience and availability. And today, I have the honor to announce AWS's plans to invest more than $13 billion across Australia over the next five years. The investment will contribute an estimated $35 billion to Australia's GDP and support 11,000 full-time jobs annually by 2027. And I can also reveal that since we launched AWS here in 2012, We've already invested more than $9 billion already in Australia. And I'm really excited to say that the Australia Prime Minister and the Tech Council of Australia welcomed our announcement today. We're so proud to invest in Australia and help accelerate the modernization of the country. And yes, it's still very, very early days. We're also committed to upskilling people with the latest cloud skills so that they can grow their careers. Because we know through a recent study that we did with Gallup is that when businesses invest in digital skills, their employees are happier. And they also see steady outcomes in innovation and revenue. We talked about doing more with less earlier. And I know many of you are focused on driving cost efficiencies this year. While at the same time, you're also challenged to come up with new ideas to innovate and grow. Last year, we've helped NAB optimize their cost using AWS Graviton Processor, and which they said 
has helped contribute an estimated $1 million per month in savings. And we've helped other organizations with doing more with less as well. For small and medium businesses, we just announced AWS Lyft. And that is a program for SMBs new to AWS to support them with free credits to kickstart their digital journey with the help, yes, of our AWS partners. New Zealand is quiet. You don't recognize this? Ah, I would say so, because another focus that we're hearing from you is sustainability. And that's a very important element of our strategy, too. At Amazon, we're on the path to powering our operations with 100% renewable energy by 2025. And we have three renewable energy pro projects in Australia today. But today, I'm pleased to reveal that Amazon will work with Mercury, one of New Zealand's largest renewable energy providers, to support their Turatea South wind farm project. And yes, that's the first renewable project that we'll have in the country, and that will enable our AWS Auckland region with renewable energy at launch next year. Just last year, in 2022, we've helped more than 600 customers understand how they can reduce their carbon footprint. And I thought, let me give you a few examples of what our customers and partners are working on to give you some inspiration on how they're using AWS to create new innovation. And one great example is Origin Energy. And they're using their virtual power plants and AWS to help manage a network of renewable energy sources. And that gives power to thousands of consumers today. Isn't that a great step forward to a more sustainable future? And AWS is also working with Climate Salad to help them grow and succeed faster by providing AWS Activate credits and go-to-market support. And yes, I see some of you smile. It is a very creative name indeed. Our AWS partners are helping on this journey too. And GoGo, a Kiwi climate tech company, provides carbon footprint insights for businesses and consumers. They work with 15 banks and millions of customers globally to provide carbon emissions data for banking transactions. These are some of the great innovation stories that make a meaningful impact to our planet going forward. AWS also helps our customers how to be secure in the cloud. Security is our top priority. And we're dedicated to helping you evolve your own culture of security so you can move fast while building secure digital services for your customers. And some of Australia and New Zealand's largest companies and public sector organizations trust AWS with their mission-critical workloads. We're committed to helping the public sector sustain operational excellence through maintaining the highest levels of security, compliance, and resilience. And in our breakout sessions today, you'll learn from leaders, security leaders from Westpac, talking about how they work on their internal security culture. And also, we have the Australian Cybersecurity Center describe how they use AWS to build the nation's threat intelligence platform. And then working closely with AWS partners, we're committed to offering all AWS customers with the most advanced security available in the cloud. Every day, we're grateful to be part of the innovation and success driven by all of you. Because 90% of what AWS builds is based on all of your feedback. While the other 10% comes from strategic interpretation of our customer needs. Innovation is in our DNA. And I hope that after today's keynote session and breakouts, that you'll walk away confident 
that AWS has your back in driving innovation. Because we'll continue to work together to drive positive, sustainable change and deliver what's best for our customers, our economies, and our planet. Because that's what AWS Summit is all about. And with that, I'm delighted to introduce our global keynote speaker, who will dive into the innovative ways of how customers are leveraging AWS to change industries. So please, welcome to the stage my colleague and AWS Vice President of Monitoring and Observability, Nandini Ramani. Hello, everyone. What a truly inspiring um, kickoff to this summit. It's so amazing to see the massive innovation that's happening here in the Sydney region. I want to thank the organizers of this summit for inviting me here. I really, truly enjoy being at these type of events because first, like you, I get to sit and learn what all of the innovation that's happening. And more importantly, I get to meet and connect with customers like yourself. And it's so great to see all the innovation that's being built on top of the services we provide. And truly, it inspires me and my team and the rest of AWS to innovate on your behalf. Since the launch of AWS in 2006, when we started with just a handful of services like EC2 and S3, we've gone on now in 2023 with over 200 services ranging from databases, analytics, and even machine learning, serving millions of customers daily. Today in my keynote, we will cover some of these capabilities and what they really mean to you. At AWS, we have a relentless culture of innovation on behalf of our customers. Just these past few weeks, right here in the Sydney region, we've had several launches, including AWS Clean Rooms that lets you share, uh, collaborate, and analyze on data without actually sharing any of the raw data across companies. We also have Amazon Linux 2023, which offers you long-term support for all the new innovations that we have in Linux. Finally, we've also launched VPC Lattice, which is a new feature to the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud that lets you connect across your services with monitoring, security, and uh, governance. As we look across the globe today, um, we have to admit we live in unprecedentedly challenging times. And one of my favorite books is The Art of War by Sun Tzu, in which he says, in the midst of challenge, there is also opportunity. An opportunity to reduce your IT spend, an opportunity to come up with creative new ideas for efficiency, and we at AWS are here to help you and empower you with those ideas. We like to think that a lot of great ideas start with a single spark, a light bulb moment, or a stroke of genius. And as history would dictate and have us believe, ancient mathematician Archimedes, in fact, uncovered the physical law of buoyancy while he was in his bathtub, which we now call the Eureka moment. Graham Clark, an Australian professor, who made the first breakthrough in creating the first cochlear implant, was on a beach on holiday when he was studying the structure of seashells. The same is true for Percy Spencer, who discovered the earliest microwave when he was actually standing beside a vacuum tube, which in those days were used in early radar systems, and he saw his candy bar melt in his pocket. Now, 
But is it really that instant and that spark that causes all of this innovation and new ideas? Or is it actually assimilation of data and information, hundreds and thousands of pieces of information throughout your journey, which leads you to that aha moment? Let's revisit, for instance, the microwave oven. Percy Spencer had more than 20 years of working on magnetrons at the MIT lab. And he was also an expert at radio technology. So it actually took Percy Spencer over 30 years to arrive at the microwave epiphany. He had to just connect the dots. It's the same thing that we all do with data. Data is the genesis of modern invention. To create new ideas with our data, we need an end-to-end -end data strategy. And for today's organizations, we must have the right structure in place to allow these ideas to flourish and be able to build upon it. While building a data end-to-end um, -end data strategy can be daunting, you're not alone. We at Amazon have been doing this way before AWS was even born. In fact, Amazon's earliest leaders repeated the phrase, data beats intuition. We enable data-driven decision-making with A-B testing for our recommendations on Amazon.com. And since then, we've go on, gone on to have two-day shipping, local uh, grocery delivery, as well as today you have the Just Walk Out stores and much more. We know data. We use data, and we've actually innovated in this space to anticipate our customer storage needs, starting with uh, S3, which originated 17 years ago, and we're now able to keep up with the expanding storage needs of all our customer. S3 is the first scalable object storage system in the cloud, and it stores over 280 trillion objects today. However, S3 was just the beginning. Since then, with our expertise, we've gone on to solve complex problems in analytics, AI, and machine learning, ranging from Amazon SageMaker to DynamoDB. Since introducing all of these services, we continue to iterate with new features to help you create, store, and act on all of your data. Customers like Airtasker, which is an Australian company that uses Amazon EKS to serve his customers in five countries with dynamic scaling to handle millions of requests as well as petabytes of data. They recently managed to drastically improve their pace of technology and um, innovation using Amazon SageMaker for dynamic inference. Airtasker remains the number one most trusted platform in the world to buy and sell local services thanks to using AWS's innovative services and machine learning capabilities. By working with customers and leaders such as yourself, we've discovered at least three core elements that make up an end-to-end -end data strategy. The first, you need a comprehensive set of tools and services to meet the needs that you have today as well as into the future. Second, you need solutions to be able to integrate your data sources no matter where they reside. And third, you need a governance strategy so you free your teams so they have access to the right data at the right time. Together, all of these will help you improve performance, optimize your IT spend, as well as increase the uh, velocity in which you can turn those ideas into reality. So let's dig in now. We believe that every customer should have access 
to a comprehensive set of high-performing tools, which accounts for their scale today, as well as into your future needs. And this is unique for each of the customers here in the audience today. A one-size-fits-all approach simply does not work. To make decisions quickly and efficiently, organizations want to store their data in open formats. They want to break down data silos. They want to run analytics and machine learning tools of their choice, and they want to use whatever technique they choose to do so. And they want to do all of this while ensuring that the right set of people have access to the right data at the right time, which means they have to have the proper security and governance. To do that, they are building their data lakes on S3. In fact, today, Amazon S3 is the foundation of hundreds of thousands of data lakes. By storing your data in open formats, you decouple compute from storage, and you can use any of our several tools that we offer to analyze and run machine learning on an on-demand pay-as-you-go uh, mechanism. We also support workloads for your applications with the most complete set of relational databases, like Amazon Aurora, which, by the way, has hundreds of thousands of customers today. In addition, we also offer eight purpose-built uh, databases, such as DynamoDB and DocumentDB. We also have the most comprehensive set of services for your analytics workloads, starting with data warehouse analytics with Redshift, big data analytics with EMR, business intelligence with QuickSight, and interactive log analytics with OpenSearch. At AWS, we are rel relentlessly innovating on your behalf to deliver the broadest and deepest set of machine learning capabilities for all levels of expertise. That way, we remove the undifferentiated heavy lifting so customers can move at a faster pace. For running machine learning at scale, our Amazon EC2 instances, which are powered by the AWS Inferentia chips, deliver up to 70% better performance and lower cost per inference than comparable current generation GPU-based EC2 instances. In addition, our EC2 instances based on our Trainium chips offer the most cost-effective machine learning training in the cloud. For expert ML practitioners, we have optimized versions of the most popular deep learning frameworks, such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, and Hugging Face. We also have services like Amazon SageMaker to make it easier for developers to create ML models. And at the top layer, we also offer AI services which are built into our machine learning, for example, Amazon Textract and Amazon Transcribe, all of which takes away the need for you to have ML skills. These services reflect our commitment in developing new ways to increase performance while lowering costs for all of our customer use cases. Our services remove the heavy lifting on behalf of the customers. We also offer the most secure and reliable ways for you to uh, protect your data stores. And finally, we enable you to keep up with your growing needs with performance at scale. These services uh, that we covered make it most comprehensive. And now moving on to the second part of what makes an end-to-end -end data strategy. When you connect the dots between your data sources across your departments, across your on-prem workloads, as well as third-party applications, that lets you see the entire picture and garner insights from all of them. And in order to do that, 
Let's talk about some, one particular feature. Combining data sources from different, different uh, places that they reside in strikes dread, a phrase that strikes dread in the most sturdiest of data teams, ETL. That's right, extract, transform, load. These pipelines can take hours and sometimes days to build and maintain, and that's just too slow for today's pace of innovation and the velocity that you need for your decision making. That's why we've been working on building integrations between our services to make it easier for you to do analytics and machine learning without needing to delve into the complexities of ETL. We provide direct integrations with our AWS streaming services so you can analyze your data as soon as it's produced and garner timely insights from it. We've integrated Amazon SageMaker into our data warehouse and databases so you can leverage your data for machine learning without having any machine learning exper expertise. And with federated querying on Redshift and Athena, you can run predictive analytics across data stored in your operational databases and data warehouses, as well as data lakes, without any data movement. But we think we can do a lot more. What if we eliminate ETL altogether? Wouldn't that be a world we would all love to be in? So at, this is our vision. We want to get to a zero ETL future where you don't have to do the heavy lifting of ETL at all. And to this end, as part of our vision, at last reInvent, we announced that Amazon Aurora will support a zero ETL integration with Amazon Redshift to bring transactional data and the anal analytical capabilities of Redshift together. Stay tuned for more on this feature throughout this year. With this update, as well as the Redshift integration with Apache Spark, we're making it much, much easier for you to access your data no matter where it resides. Looking across all of our services, AWS has hundreds of data sources, including SaaS applications, on-prem infrastructure, as well as other clouds, so you can leverage the power of all of your data no matter where it resides. For example, with Amazon SageMaker Data Wrangler, which is our low-code data preparation tool for machine learning, you can easily import your data for machine, uh, uh, machine learning model training uh, with more than 40 connectors, including Databricks and Snowflake. We will continue to expand on these capabilities to make it easier for you to connect and act on all of your data. Now, let's look at the final element of what makes an end-to-end -end data strategy. Governance. So governance historically has been used as more of a defensive measure, which means you lock down your data in silos. Now, as the data volume increases and grows, it becomes more and more vital to have a real data governance strategy. A governance strategy for data helps you move and innovate faster by ensuring that you have well-defined guardrails. And with these guardrails, you can ensure that the right people have the right access to the right data just when they need it. And governance can be time-consuming, which is why we are working to make sure that we remove all the manual tasks that you need for data governance. AWS Lake Formation helps you easily govern and audit your data in data lakes on S3 at a cell and row level permissions. So this gives you really good granularity. For machine learning, we recently announced new features in Amazon SageMaker to address common machine learning challenges for governance. But true end-to-end -end governance for all of your data 
you need more, which is the vision that we are on. So to that end, just last week, we announced Amazon Data Zone. Amazon Data Zone is a data management service that helps multiple teams across your organization catalog, analyze, share, and govern all your data. Amazon Data Zone helps you have complete visibility with entire data discovery, access, and usage lifecycle. All of this with a rich visual interface. So this helps you understand who is using the data, who authorized it, and who, where the data is being shared. Now, I've shared with you the three core elements of an end-to-end -end data strategy. All of these services together form part of that strategy, and they help you store and query data for your, from your databases, data lakes, and data warehouses. They let you act on data with analytics, machine learning, and business intelligent tools, and catalog and govern your data with services that help you centralize access control using lake formation or Amazon data zones. So to recap, here are the three core elements of a true end-to-end -end data strategy. A comprehensive set of services, access to data no matter where it re resides, truly integrated, and with a great governance strategy. Now, at Amazon, we truly believe in telling our stories through customers. So to that end, I would like to invite to this stage one of our customers who's going to share how they are using AWS to meet their organizational needs. Please welcome Cameron Adams, co-founder and chief product officer, Canva. Camera, right? Okay. Let me tell you how Canva changed my life. Thank you for helping me make the design that allowed me to find my birth mother. Canva was one of the tools that allowed me to take those visions and turn them into something that I could share with other people. With Canva, we can communicate complex issues simply. The most important part of Canva for me is that it helps me to tell my story. Good morning, AWS Summit. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you for the polite round of applause. Uh, it is an absolute honor to be sharing the stage today with such amazing women in technology. And it's also amazing to be on stage here in Sydney, which is where we started Canva just over a decade ago. And we started Canva with the vision of empowering the whole world to design. Ten years ago, we started with just one product in mind that we desperately wanted to get into the hands of people all around the globe. And as we started building that, we quickly realized that in order to make a product that would scale to hundreds of millions of people, you actually need to build a great company that attracts the brightest minds from around the world. We also realize that you need a great culture that empowers those people to make the right decisions every single day. And I'm proud to say that these guiding principles have enabled our Aussie startup to become one of the fastest growing technology companies in the world. We truly believe that design can bring new superpowers to people all over the world. And we now have 125 million monthly active users using Canva in 190 different countries. And collectively, they've created over 15 billion designs. 
Since Canvas started, we've seen visual communication and collaboration become more important than ever before. Visual communication is fast becoming the most impactful way to communicate in the workplace. We recently surveyed 1,600 global business leaders, and the vast majority agreed that visual communication methods increase efficiency, enhance collaboration, and carry more authority than other methods of communication. The 125 million people that use Canva every month show that there is a real thirst to communicate visually with easy-to-use design tools. And in order to fuel our crazy big growth, we also need a technology platform that can keep up with us. AWS, as our technology platform, is one of the often overlooked secrets to Canva's growth. We have been a web product from day one. The cloud is truly in our DNA. And that means that the huge strengths of the web are also the huge strengths of Canva itself. Ease of access, seamless ability to collaborate with others, all these things have driven tremendous amount of growth, and we have been unconstrained by any platform. I'd also love to pause here and say a big thank you to Canva's text-to-image feature for delivering this beautiful background image entirely from its own imagination. So let's talk about data for a bit. Our rapid growth means that we have an incredible amount of data. So as I mentioned before, we have 15 billion designs on Canva's platform. Every single day, we have 50 million uploads. And every week, we have 100 billion events going through our system. All of this means that we require 200 petabytes of storage to store it all. It also means we have a data lake that doubles in size every six months. We've actually evolved from a data lake to a data lake house to a service-aligned data architecture. We now use over 60 services from AWS. And behind me, you can see a high-level architecture of our Canva backend services integrated with our service-aligned data platform. When we have this tidal wave of data running through our systems, it means we need to focus on three main priorities. Firstly, in order to deliver personalized experiences and content to our customers, we need to manage and analyze huge amounts of data in real time. Second, we need to maintain data quality and consistency across multiple data sources and systems. And this is especially true as we have expanded globally and as we've acquired new businesses. And lastly, we need to ensure the highest levels of security so that our users' data privacy is protected. This has meant making architectural changes to support our product, our growth, and our customer performance. For example, Amazon DynamoDB and Amazon Elasticache allowed us to make remote work and live collaboration way more fun and seamless across the whole Canva visual suite. You can see all those moving text boxes and cursors. That's all them at play. We implemented data streaming with Amazon Kinesis and change data capture with AWS Database Migration Service to support the exponential growth of our collaborative tools. And we also introduced a service-aligned data architecture that enables all of our AI use cases, which I'll talk about in a minute. Another way that Amazon has helped us innovate comes from an internal hackathon that we had in 2019. And the winning idea was to pilot recommendations with the help of Amazon Personalize. It helped to provide recommendations to our entire user base by prioritizing automation and standardization. And today, we actually train our own models and use Amazon SageMaker to host these models. Advances like this over the past few years have pushed artificial intelligence further into the everyday of software development. And just last year, artificial intelligence has grown in leaps and bounds. And it's now made visual AI one of the most exciting technologies to work with. 
Our approach with Amazon Services has allowed us to build and launch more than 60 ML models into production. And it covers use cases from search to recommendations, personalization, and generative AI. This enables our high traffic models to receive up to 2,000 requests per second. And when we launched text to image in uh, November 2022, it really set a new bar for our AI ambitions. Text to image is actually a feature that allows any user to generate an image just from a text description. And with the assistance of Amazon SageMaker, we were able to productionize this feature in just three weeks, from idea to reality. And we had every confidence it would be available and able to scale to every one of our users around the world. Since launching text to image we've actually had 60 million images generated through Canva's text-to-image feature alone. To give you another idea about the power of visual AI, we also recently unveiled a couple of tools powered by AWS that act as co-creators and accelerate the design process. The first of these is Magic Design, which kickstarts your creation process by giving you tailored and unique designs to any image that you upload to it. It analyzes your image, determines its subject, and creates a design that is customized specifically for it. Magic Design can also help if you're creating a presentation from scratch. You just have to prompt our editor and watch as it generates a range of presentation options with an outline and appropriate content for each slide. Or maybe you want to add frame-perfect music to your video. BeatSync uses AI to analyze audio and automatically sync it to your video footage. In just one click, it saves you a heap of time and a heap of fiddling around. So not only has AWS enabled us to improve our products and drive innovation, but AWS's services are also supporting us in one of our most important values, be a force for good. Be a force for good is a statement that steers the decisions of all Canvanauts, and it influences the goals we set and the culture we create as a company. It's also what drives us to work harder on our journey towards sustainability. Canva was the first Australian company to design the Climate Pledge and commit to reaching net zero by 2040. Our head office in Australia is powered by 100% renewable energy, and our global operations and data services are transitioning to 100% renewable energy thanks to collaborations with service providers like AWS. As a digital company, our use of the AWS Customer Carbon Footprint tool is key to our carbon reduction goals. The tool actually provides Canva with estimates of the carbon emissions from our use of AWS, and it helps us to track and report our emissions reductions. Another way we live our value of being a force for good is by giving back. We're proud to participate in AWS Activate to support the next wave of startups, founders, and entrepreneurs. This program gives eligible companies free access to Canva for three months, and we're proud to say that it is one of the most leveraged offers in Activate globally. We're currently working with AWS on a similar approach for small and medium enterprises to enable both startups and SMEs to have a competitive edge in creating visually appealing and compelling content. It has been one remarkable decade at Canva, but inside Canva, we often say that we're only 1% of the way there, and it's certainly never been truer than it is today. We still have so many products to build and markets to grow in, but with our latest AI-driven tools and features, we are looking forward to bringing even more design magic to customers all around the world, powered by AWS. Together, we are looking forward to continue to make Australia and New Zealand the best places to start a global tech company in the world. At Canva, we've been fortunate to attract some of the best and brightest minds from leading companies. And by bringing this talent into our local tech sector, it helps us to grow and learn together. We hope that Canva's journey over the past decade will inspire others into the future 
and help pave the way for the next Canva, the next Atlassian, or maybe even the next Amazon right here in Australia and New Zealand. Thank you for listening to a bit of a story, and I hope that throughout today, you see a whole lot more content that inspires you to build a better future. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Oh my God, that gave me goosebumps. Um, it's so amazing to see all the nice, uh, great innovative ideas being built on AWS. Now, having an idea and connecting the dots is just one thing. But an idea is nothing if you cannot build it. At AWS, we are here to support you so that you can build on the next big idea and turn that spark into the next big application. And we focus on improving and providing the right conditions for you to do that. Now, each of you in this audience is different. The industries you represent are unique. That's why we take an, a customer-centric approach. And as Rianne mentioned, 90% of our roadmap comes from customer requests such as yourself. We don't build technology for technology's sake, nor do we copy others. We understand your specific needs, and then we employ industry experts and then get to work on innovating on your behalf. Our goal is to focus, for you to focus on innovation for your customers while we focus on innovation of infrastructure and services. In today's world, innovation is crucial. And the faster you innovate, and you want to do this in very cost-effective ways. A study has found that by migrating your on-prem workloads to AWS, companies have reduced time in building new fe features for their applications by 43%. For example, Veolia, Australia and New Zealand migrated 34 applications to AWS, and with that, they were able to be improve their agility of development and project delivery as well. They did this by replatforming, retiring, and refactoring SQL applications, and by doing this, Veolia has saved 67% on its database spend since migrating to AWS. Since the beginning, we have been focused on enabling any application to run in the cloud. This means that our services are designed for enterprise applications, high-performance computing applications, as well as modern applications that could be serverless, container-based, or machine learning workloads. We also support low latency and IoT applications. And we also understand that some applications, due to either data residency requirements or local uh, data processing requirements, have to run on-prem. This is why we also support applications in a hybrid environment so that our tools work both on on-prem as well as in the AWS cloud. I believe AWS is the best place for you to build your next big idea. And I think this slide sums it up really well. Here are the three core reasons I believe it. First, we have the broadest and deepest selection of innovative services to support your unique needs. Second, we deliver the best price performance and value for your investment. And third, we offer a consistent um, experience no matter where your applications are running. Let's dive deeper into the first area. If you want to build the next big application and turn that spark, into the next big idea, you should innovate on top of services with the most capabilities. AWS has over 200 fully featured services to support virtually any application, more than any other cloud provider, from compute 
storage, networking, to ML and quantum technologies, we support them all. We offer the deepest functionality within each of those services. Let's take Amazon EC2, for example. We have over 600 options, so you can find the perfect combination of resources for your particular unique application needs. This is made possible by the innovative AWS Nitro system, which, by the way, I'm going to cover this in more detail later. This choice allows you to optimize performance, cost, and scalability for your application. EC2 is great because it gives you so many levers that help you build a scalable architecture. But EC2 is just one compute option that we offer. You can choose the level of abstraction, and we provide you with the necessary tools, APIs, and services for you to build your application. You can choose from our container-based orchestration services by choosing either ECS or EKS, or you can choose to go entirely serverless with AWS Lambda and Fargate. AWS has been a pioneer in serverless technology. Since we launched Lambda way back in 2014, we have always been innovating on your behalf. In fact, we have released over 105 Lambda features since its first launch. One su such example is a feature we call AWS Lambda Snap Start. This feature enables customers to achieve 10 times faster startup, function startup performance for Java applications. And you can do this with no code change or minimal code change. I love that about the cloud. One day you wake up, and your applications just go 10x faster. It's almost like magic, except with fewer rabbits or none at all. And one such Australian customer who's enjoying the magic of serverless is Deputy. Deputy is on a mission to simplify shift work for workers and businesses globally. They use AWS to drive 70% faster data requests times for their customers. They scale to support hundreds of millions of data points and save time by eliminating maintenance and management. All of this while lowering cost as well. The company uses Amazon OpenSearch for their BI dashboards, and data pipelines are built with Kinesis data streams and AWS Lambda. No matter your favor of compute, whether it be um, EC2 or container-based or serverless, you're going to need storage. We have a complete set of storage options, whether it's object, block, or file storage. S3 object storage delivers industry-leading 11 nines of durability. Millions of AWS customers use EBS, driving trillions of I.O. and exabytes of, da uh, uh, exabytes of data throughput daily. And for file storage, we totally understand that you might need to have, you will need to have light-to-light -light capability for your on-prem workloads. So that's why with FSx, we offer light-for-light -light capabilities with your on-prem workloads with Windows Server, NetApp ONTAP, Luster, and OpenZFS. We are committed to delivering exceptional performance at the right cost for you. After years of optimizing traditional virtualization systems to the limit, we knew we had to make a dramatic change in architecture if we were going to continue to improve performance for our customers. Hypervisors were designed with a single machine in mind, not for a fleet of machines. This realization made us rethink 
the everything and became our spark in creating the AWS Nitro system, which offloads virtualization functions to dedicated hardware. This enables security to be built in at the chip level so it can continually monitor and protect hardware against potential threats. It enabled other security features such as Nitro Enclaves, which create isolated compute environments at the hardware level for processing highly sensitive data. It also has significant performance advantage that can make your applications more efficient. Take our sixth generation x86 instances with Nitro. On some workloads, EC2 instances can deliver over 15% higher throughput performance as compared to other major cloud providers running on the same CPU. But our innovation did not stop there. We designed our own processors, starting with Graviton, which today delivers the best end-to-end -end performance and energy efficiency. We're now on to our third generation of Graviton 3, uh, which is our third generation of processors. And Graviton 3-based instances are 25% faster than Graviton 2, and they use 60% less energy than comparable EC2 instances. Customers of every size who have migrated their workloads to Graviton are achieving up to 40% better price performance by simply shifting their workloads to Graviton. For example, Epic Games began developing its services on AWS in 2012. And in 2018, they went all in on AWS to deliver storage, analytics, and scaling demands for its games like Fortnite. Today, Fortnite runs almost entirely on AWS, using tens of thousands of EC2 instances powered by Graviton processors, Epic scales compute capacity at optimal performance for millions of its players globally. But we didn't stop there. We continue to innovate on your behalf. Let's look at another new innovation at the network level. Scalable Reliable Datagram, or SRD. If there's one thing I've learned in my time at AWS, good enough simply isn't good enough. At other cloud providers, they may look at the TCP stack and say, you know what, networking stack, TCP, that's good enough but not us. Customers building high-performance computing applications have told us that they need lower tail latency with higher throughput. So we went to work. And because we want to enable any application to run on AWS, we came up with a new network protocol called SRD. This new protocol better utilizes our massive data center network, enabling higher bandwidth and lower latency for the most demanding network applications. With ENA Express, we expanded SRD technology to bring its performance to the mainstream. By delivering it to all of your ENA in interfaces, and this, by the way, is something you simply cannot do in your own data center. Just enable ENA Express on your ENA interface, and you get the benefits of lower latency and more consistent networking with higher throughput. Graviton, SRD, and ENA Express are all examples of how we relentlessly innovate on behalf of our customers. Whether you are new to the cloud or have some applications already running on, on the cloud, today's summit is going to show you valuable insights on how you can leverage a custom silicon with Graviton, tooling so that you can right-size your workloads, and using the right resource type and deleting unwanted resources. As well as, you can use 
uh, features like Amazon S3's intelligent tiering, which has saved customers over a billion dollars, as well as elastic resource provisioning, which can lower your total overall IT spend. Finally, we can show you how to increase operational efficiency by using reserved instances and savings plans, which can save you up to 72%. This brings me to the final reason why I think AWS is the best cloud for you. We are working hard to enable AWS infrastructure and services wherever you build your next big application. The AWS global infrastructure delivers a cloud infrastructure that you can depend on. The AWS cloud has 99 availability zones within 31 geographic regions, including, as Rianne mentioned, one that we launched in Melbourne as well. We now have 450 points of presence. No other cloud offers as many region, regions with as many availability zones connected to low latency, higher throughput, and highly redundant networking. Our core infrastructure is built to satisfy the security requirements of global banks and other high sensitivity organizations. This is backed with a deep set of cloud security tools with over 300 security compliance and governance features all built in. But this secure, reliable network is not only available to us. It's available to all of you and your customers as well. And they meet you wherever you are. When you have the flexibility to run your applications closer to where you need them, this gives you a consistency of using the same network, the same control plane, APIs, and AWS services as you do in region. If you need to run your applications with single digit millisecond latency, you can choose AWS local zone or AWS wavelength. Here in Australia, you already have a local zone in Perth, and we will soon be launching one in Brisbane as well. Or if you would like to run your applications on-prem, you can choose from our AWS outposts. You can even extend this to remote or rugged area with limited or no connectivity at all with our AWS Snow family of devices. And even if your data resides off this planet, you can use AWS Ground Station which provides satellite antennas in close proximity with AWS region infrastructure, so you have access even if your data lives off this planet. How amazing is that? I wasn't joking when I said you can choose to build your next application wherever you want, and AWS gives you that flexibility to innovate. So if you want to turn those ideas into reality, there's no better place to do it than AWS. And I told you I believe that, but I would love for you to hear this from one of our customers on how they are leveraging AWS infrastructure for them and how they are innovating with it. Please welcome Nicole Sheffield, Managing Director at West Farmers One Digital. Well, it's certainly been an exciting morning and I'm feeling very excited. We have some of our team in the room and many watching online and it's got my creative juices flowing, so hopefully yours as well. I'm sure many of you are sitting here and thinking, 
what is One Digital? That's okay. Hopefully, you're not sitting here thinking, what is West Farmers? Because it is Australia's oldest conglomerate. It's formed in 1914. And many of you, all of you actually, shop in our stores. So we're known for wonderful stores such as Bunnings, Kmart, Target, Officeworks, Priceline, just to name a few. So true Australian icons. And the great thing about West Farmers is, is it has 120,000 passionate team members, over 515,000 shareholders, and last year it made $36.8 billion in revenue. But it also has a pretty powerful digital footprint. We have over 1.5 million digital transactions per month and over 210 million digital interactions per month. So with an organisation like this that is really strong, that has a strong omni-channel presence, why would you go and do a startup? in 2022. Like, why would you start one? Well, actually, we realised that we needed to be where our customers were. And where our customers were increasingly shopping with us online and in store, but we really needed to build out our ecosystem. And our ecosystem really brings the strength of our omnichannel presence together in a true subscription program that delivers enormous benefits for our customers, whether it's free delivery, click and collect, loyalty points through our partner flybys, or even our streaming partner, Disney Plus. All of these benefits are really important and they put the household at the centre of everything we do. And that actually drives our flywheel and makes us stronger together. But at the centre of that is data, and we've heard a lot about data this morning. Data helps us understand our customers, it helps us build better solutions and products for our customers, and it really drives the understanding of how we will build out this flywheel. So, but at the core of that is the consumer subscription program, and that is one pass. We launched in May last year, so when I say startup, I mean startup. We are literally a baby, nine months old. But ambitions are easy on paper, they're never as easy to bring to life. So our first challenge was actually building out One Digital, building out this brand new organisation at Pace. And also, secondly, building out how we're going to show value for our customers so that they actually join the subscription program. So when you've got a country as large as ours and you've got these great brands, we realised that the most important thing that we first had to launch with was a free delivery offer. So we launched on May 16 with Kmart, Target and Catch to begin with, and we actually launched with a free delivery offer for all of our customers in metro, regional Australia, wherever they were. And Bunnings joined us late last year. So that, and that is really just the beginning for us because we knew that we needed to continually add features and pivot all the time to drive value to our subscribers. And to do that, we really needed a cloud partner, which is where AWS came in. Because we needed highly available, highly resilient cloud services for products that we couldn't even envisage today. And we kind of had to balance a pretty complex environment. Let's face it, some of our point of sale systems were 30 years old, and we needed to build that into a really um, sophisticated digital technology stack. So what do we do? We created an adaptable platform built on AWS that allowed us to collate and integrate all of those critical data sources. We mobilised our retail services, um, things like payment gateways and our contact centre technology in a matter of weeks. And what did that do? That unlocked value for our customers at speed. We used a range of, wide, a range of AWS services. I mean, we heard many of them this morning, but compute, storage, databases, security, compliance. And that actually allowed us to build quickly and actually not worry about infrastructure management. And that meant that it allowed our team to focus on what they really needed to focus on, which is creating great customer experiences rather than worrying about technology management. So at the core of the OnePass platform is Amazon MSK. We've built responsive systems using an event-driven architecture, and this help, has helped us manage our infrastructure and simplify our, our operations, and this is really important for our developer and DevOps teams. We're able to ga gather these customer insights quickly using triggers to respond to our customers and enabling us to really accelerate our product journeys. Our architecture guiding principles allowed us to take over 120 architecture and engineering decisions in a few months to shape our foundations, our product, platform and standards. 
And at the core of this has been privacy and customer trust because that has to be at the centre of every decision we make. And we need to ensure that we're protecting our customer privacy as a top priority. Secondly, by using AWS services, we were able to access ready-made, high-quality engineering talent and delivery talent pools. This helped build a highly engaged team. So, how has it gone? Well, using AWS, we were able to quickly integrate with divisions and launch well ahead of time. Now, AWS is also the preferred cloud provider for Kmart, Target, Officeworks, Catch, and Flybys. So we were able to leverage the existing skills within our environments and across West Farmers. And this allowed our teams to rapidly build and deploy over 20 Amazon ECS services and 50 AWS Lambda functions and launch OnePass in months, not years. So what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing great member engagement. And in fact, all of the KPIs that we've set, sales growth, shopping frequency, online sales conversion, and cross-shopping rates are all trending positively. But what I'm most excited about is a one-pass shopper shops 34 times more than a non-one-pass member. So we are also looking to really continue to grow, not just what we're doing for these members, but obviously scale these members. And we know an important part of doing that will be personalization. So we're using AWS services to, on personalization use cases that will give us the data to really accelerate that. So what's next for us? Well, our OnePass will continue to expand. Officeworks will be joining later this year. We'll also be launching a number of in-store offers because we are truly an omni-channel um, business, and that's really important for our customers. And we want to be where our members are. There'll be lots of exclusive member offers. If you're not a member, please join. Um, but it's a really exciting time for us as we really embark something quite new and different for West Farmers. One data business will grow as we continue to add use cases and build out our understanding of our customers. And a catch, our online marketplace, will just continue to improve its functionality and delivery for its customers. So. At the heart of our decisions remains the customer. Where the West Farmers back in 1914, it was all about the customer, and today in 2023, that hasn't changed. So while our tech technology has become more intuitive and sophisticated, actually our knowledge and respect and wanting to do right by the customer has not changed. So creating products that deliver for them is absolutely critical. And for us, the next generation of what we're exploring with AWS includes harnessing customer insights, driving self-service convenience, optimizing equipment and inventory, and keeping our stores safe and healthy. Trust is hard in digital. Trust that we're doing the right thing by the customer, trust that we're going at the right direction, trust that we're going at the right speed, and importantly, trust that we've got the right partners that can balance both commercial outcomes and, of course, innovation and ease of use. So, but for all of us working at One Digital, and as I said, there's many of us here in the room and online, we are, work we are very excited about what's ahead. We it is nothing more re rewarding than launching something new and seeing customers enjoy it and get value out of it. So, for us, really is about moving from strength to strength and continuing on this really important journey. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Nicole. Wow. It's not just our infrastructure that will help you in your journey, though. To embrace innovation truly, it's crucial that you ensure that your um, developers and builders have the knowledge and skills required to turn those ideas into reality. At AWS, we offer a variety of courses, over 600 digital courses, classroom training, as well as various certifications to validate your expertise. And, many, and today, you will see many, many interesting sessions right here at the summit. Additionally, through AWS education programs such as AWS Academy, AWS Educate, and AWS Restart, you have access to entry-level talent who come with hands-on experience in the AWS cloud and can help infuse diverse perspectives into your organizations. 
Thank you all for joining us here today, and I hope you found this session informative, and I encourage you to spend your day today learning and seeing how you can unlock the potential of innovation within your organizations. And you will see a lot of demos, you will hear from us, AWS, but you will also see and hear from partners and customers on how they are using AWS services to help them innovate and build their next idea. Whether it's a mobile app, whether it's a, a web app, or a complex enterprise solution, our broad range of services can help you turn those sparks into reality. So I encourage all of you to go on today and enjoy yourselves at the summit today. Thank you again for hanging with us.